Hello everyone, it's me, Steve. I have decided to do these little, this little limited series, if you will, for my YouTube channel because I've been neglecting it and there's reasons for that. It's not me being lazy, it's me getting another full-time job. It is also our big trips we have planned this year. So things are gonna have to wait and be put off probably until winter. So I'm doing this as sort of filler, if you will. I'm not gonna lie about it. That's what it is on my channel to keep it going a little bit, but it's gonna be quality filler, I hope. This little series here, mini series, whatever it turns out to be, hopefully this won't be the only one. I'm gonna talk about certain words and how we use them in geology and how people who aren't geologists misinterpret those words or apply them in lay speak and how a certain group of people will often take words to muddy the waters. And we're not going to really talk about that last part today, but I am going to talk about the word flood because I've noticed online that you know, certain people try to use this word differently. Now, when I say flood, us geologists use it in the same way most people think about it. It's one of those words that means the same. Basically, a vast, quick release of water into the environment, either through rain or a dam failure, or either natural or man-made, something like that. That's how we think of it, too. However, there's a group of people out there, and I think they were doing this to try to convince themselves of something. And it took us, me a while and a couple other people a while to understand what they were really talking about. When geologists talk about uh, floods, that's what we mean. Basically like you guys do. However, I think there's a group of, I don't know, I want to say old earth creationists, if you will, that use the word flood in a way that we would use the terms sea transgression or regression. Floods are something that happen very quickly. They are not things that happen over hundreds of thousands or millions of years. The sea, and in geology we use that term basically to mean any sort of saltwater transgression or something, you know, it's covering the land or the ocean floor. It's a generic term. It can mean ocean. It can mean intercatonic sea. You know, it can mean either of those things. So it doesn't mean sea like you think of sea. But flood doesn't apply to that. When we talk about like the sock sequence or the tip of canoe sequence in geology, those are tr vast general transgressions and regressions with minor ones in between. So what that means is the oceans spill upon the land in a transgression and they subside in a regression. Now it can be a total regression or a total transgression, but it doesn't have to be. These things can be partial too. They don't have to be massive things. Well, you might be like, well, if sea level rises globally, it's going to have an effect. Yes, that's true. And the sea will rise globally if there's a transgression. However, all places on Earth aren't the same. If you're getting a marine deposit on, say, a passive margin sequence, you're going to see these transgressions and regressions. However, if you're up on a mountaintop in some ancient landscape that's equivalent to like the the Andes in South America, you're not going to notice these uh, transgressions and regressions, all right? They're not going to be preserved in the rock record because that's an area of, of an active unconformity forming. Remember, unconformities don't uh, continue forever. Conformities don't continue forever, okay? But a transgression is not a flood. Now, numerous things can cause those. Ice caps growing, waxing, waning, but that only gives you a about 100 meters or 200 meters or so of transgression, regression. Uh, tectonics plays a huge part in this. Basin formation, uh, you know, the, as, as the landscape subsides due to tectonics, plates moving about the globe, you can get a transgression and you can get deeper ones, several hundred meters deep on stable cratons, something ice caps can't do or even glacial advances and retreats. This is not, they just don't freeze enough of the ocean to do that. So before this gets too long, I just basically wanna say that a transgression is not a flood 
in geology. Those are not the same thing. And these take time. Tectonics on a global scale in the age of the solar system and universe this happens quickly. But in a human time scale, it's negligible. You know, you may live long enough to see, you know, half a centimeter of sea transgression in your lifetime. If, you know, maybe in in, in in certain circumstances, like, you know, ice caps melting quickly, yeah, that kind of thing. But generally, these things take hundreds of thousands to millions of years to get a transgression. And even during a transgression, you'll get minor regressions, because even though tectonics might be subsiding a basin or creating a basin, you may get wa waning and waxing ice caps somewhere else. So this is complex. So if you're talking about that, transgressions and regressions in geology, do not use the term flood. It's not a word we use in geology. And it's confusing and it confuses people, it confuses us because we're like, that's not what a flood is. And I don't know if this type of scenario is intentional or not to try to confuse people or if those people have been taught incorrectly by other people. Uh, I mean, you can use the term, I guess, as a base, you know, to talk about somebody say, well, when the land is flooded over a long period of time, we call that a transgression. That kind of explanation is fine, but don't use that word flood in lieu of transgression. Those are not synonyms, all right? And it's kind of a muddy water thing, and we'll get more into this as the series progresses with more terms that are intentionally used to mislead people. All right, but anyway, that's it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and I hope you learned something.